So here we have a 2013 Dodge 3500. It's the new style, radius arm front end. Um, we just road tested it and it road tested pretty good. Um, it's got the steering column fixed in it with the, the slugs for the, for the intermediate shaft. So that was good. Overall, it drove pretty good. Um, so now we're going to check the front end and make sure the ball joints are good or bad. So this, we're checking a vertical plate in the ball joint. You can actually hear the movement. And then checking lateral play. Like that. Obviously loose. Obviously need to be changed. Now Dodge gives you a gigantic spec for these ball joints which I think is kind of unrealistic because my, my feeling is if it starts to wear the tires it's time to change the ball joints and this has definitely some irregular wear I mean these tires are really worn badly but they're just old and worn out so the ball joints are not doing us any favors so now I'm just checking you joints chances are if you've got one that's piled up you'll feel a resistance change if you roll it so you're kind of perpendicular and then go to steer it. If you've got a bad joint, chances are you'll feel it right here. Even if you can't feel the difference with it cranked, you'll see it or feel it with the, with the wheel cranked. But We'll check it when the axles are out just to make sure that they flop back and forth. And, uh, yeah, that's magic right there. Hey, can you lean on it top to bottom? Top to bottom. Yeah, just grab the tire and just oh, yeah. shake it. Yeah. So that is all in the upper. Hey, okay, let's go to the other side. So I imagine there's probably only about maybe 40 thou vertical in these ones. But 40 thou is a lot of movement. A lot of uncontrolled movement. Ready? Yeah. This one's not so bad. It's hard, the truck's moving. Yeah, but there's maybe 15 on that side. So I'm going to take it from top to bottom. And that is all in the upper. The lower is actually kind of hidden because the uh, the plastic inserts that are inside them. Yeah. It you, It's hard to see it in motion like this, but when you put the weight of the truck on it, it it'll actually move more than what you actually see. Yeah. Which is part of what creates that weird cupping in the tires in the front. Bring that. I gotta be out of your way too, don't I? Ready? Yeah. Take this side off before nope. you... Nope, I'm gonna leave that on there so we don't have to drop it completely. Okay. Once we get around to that side wall. We'll do it then.
That's awesome. I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let that soak for a bit. Might as well douse the other side just so it's all right. It actually came off? Oh, yeah. Come front. I need a snake so I don't pull the truck off the hood. Sensor wire, it's right there. So, yeah, I just, I'll just tuck it off to the side. We won't have to. Have it. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe, potentially, yes. We'll just hang everything. Up. Came off good. Leave the nuts on. Kind of like that. Yeah. I'm actually pretty usually not bad at it because I had to do that. The, the demo axle we had it was like 50,000 times. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, one knuckle. So, can you see this? Are you taping in? You can see the play there. Now, there's always going to be vertical play in these because that's how they're designed. But, what you're looking for is lateral play. And that, you know, it's worn out. The bottom. Should turn pretty freely. This one didn't have a whole lot of vertical movement in it. it. Does rotate pretty good. But we're changing the other three, so we're gonna change this one as well. Break road 
It takes quite a bit to crack these loose. Do you want to back it off and bring it this way? Sure. Okay, you should probably put a breaker bar on, put some pressure on it. Okay. And then. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. So actually, there's, think there's still a bit of load on here, so. I think we this guy. I just don't want to put too much load on that. Clamp? Let me see. Yeah, I broke it loose. You can see the rust broken. Yeah. First time out, these things are incredibly hard. Like I said, you, <laughs> I get phone calls because people think that there's a sap ring in there. Like a hidden sap ring. So you play with the guy. Okay, get rid of it. Yeah, you gotta watch, you don't. <laughs> yep, there we go. Now this adapter, we don't have a lot of room. We gotta make sure that this length is long enough or it's just gonna jam the ball joint in the bottom. And you're gonna work and work and work and work and it's not gonna go anywhere. good for the tool. Do you have a shorter piece for the upper part? Going on here, it uh, will spend hours trying to get that thing off. Then you realize you just have to hit it. Just making an example of it. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Down to the That's just sized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, she's tight.
Woo. Oh. So when we're installing the EMF ball joints, we use an adapter that goes around the top and sets on this ridge so you don't damage the cap, like so. So we're just getting the adapters ready. Are you ready to rock and or roll? Sometimes it's a little bit of a monkey show. So when we start, the key to this is going to make sure that this starts tracking in straight. If it doesn't, then we need to correct it right off the hop or it's going to be almost impossible to correct it without damaging the joint. <clears throat>
Did we buy? Yeah, uh, we did shift here. Mr. President. relieve the pressure to help suck it in rather than bending it. So when you're putting these in, you want to make sure that there's no gap anywhere around the top. Because this is a solid joint, if this is cocked at all, it's not going to go into your knuckle straight, which could cause stiff steering. So with this set screw, um, you want to put it either straight forward or straight backwards. We prefer straight backwards so it doesn't pack full of road grime, etc, etc. If you rotate this inboard, because of how the disc designed, you won't be able to get at the, at the set screw. Do that now. set up anymore. Oh, yours is bigger, so. <laughs> <coughs> Man. I love it. Before I kill myself, it's a different sound. Thank <laughs> you. 
see it jump when he does that. Right? So if you're ever putting these in and it all of a sudden doesn't move, you want to back this off to make sure that you're not hitting anything. Or you may damage the tool or more importantly, damage the front. Swing up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So when you're done installing it, the important part right here is to check and make sure that the ball joint still moves freely because sometimes the ring will push itself up and, and squish the insert into the ball making it a little stiffer. At this point you can adjust it by loosening the set screw and backing the ring off. Um, it's not required all the time but every once in a while it'll get a little stiffer, you adjust it and then you know your ball joint's good. Okay, so we. This joint's tight, um, so if, after install, if the joint tightens up, you can feel it. It should still feel like when you first opened your package. What you do is you take out your set screw all the way. Put your spanner wrench in the holes. Break it loose. Back. If I could find them. Okay. A little bit light with it. Take it and hit it with the hammer just a little bit, loosen it up. Readjust it. Just a little tight, say so have about 40 inch pounds of pressure, which is what a move or whatever comes as, and it'll help keep your truck pointed straight down the road, but it creates a little bit of memory steer. So when you turn your steering wheel, it's gonna to wanna to dart off. But what it does is it helps mask any other steering problem you have in the truck, which is what most mechanic shops do. They'll put in a stiff ball joint and it masks everything and you're good for about 20, 30,000 K maybe 15,000 K and then when they loosen up, your truck will start getting darty and go all over the road and they'll blame the ball joint and then they'll replace the ball joint again. 
with us, I like to actually set it loose, and then you know if you've got problems right away, because we know it's not the ball joint. It's a different different issue in the truck. <coughs> ball joint will also last longer, so that's a little looser. to actually tighten them. People worry about having to tighten them all the time. It's not really an issue until you see up and down play about 10, 20 thou, I think. Yeah, that's what it is. about that. 10, 15 thou maybe. But I mean, we still haven't seen up and down play in them. So I wouldn't really worry too much about ever adjusting this ring after it's installed. And the install nuts, which are important because they, with the ball joints being so free, it will continue to rotate on you when you have the nylocks on. So what I like to do is get both nuts in. Tighten the top down and then tighten the bottom. And my array sockets So after you get your install nuts on, you just want to make sure that this is free, no binding, lock to lock, and no effort required. Now it'll change a little when you grease it, but we'll get to that in a second. Okay, making sure that the knuckle moves back and forth is a really important step. If you don't check it and the knuckle's stiff or something stiff later, you don't know if the knuck if the joints were lined up properly, and it sucks having to take the bearing and the axles and everything else back off the truck. Uh, some shops will just pound the joints on, put everything together, slap it together, and then the truck will steer weird. They're so used to just slamming ball joints in and not actually checking to see if it's free moving at this point, that they'll forget. It's not their fault, but uh, it's just a step that we really suggest that you don't skip because it saves a lot of shop time taking the truck back apart to see if the joints are actually the problem. So now I'm putting on the nylocks and then we will torque them as per the instructions. Torque right, sir. Now, what is the lower supposed to be torqued to? <laughs> 130? 128, I think. Uh, do you have your instructions in the box? Mm -hmm. I 
Is it 70 for the 75? 70? 70. And then grab it and make sure it steers. Now, after it's been torqued, it actually steers better than when the install nuts went on. These are so sensitive in geometry that under torqued, over torqued, it's going to affect it. So make sure it's done properly. And now we have grease. We're going to grease the lower first, probably with five pumps. Didn't tighten. Grease it until it tightens. You can hear it. Super snug. And you go to the top. We're probably going to put 15 or until it starts coming out of the boot. You gotta make sure, you can usually hear it pop. When you hear the pop, it stops moving. It'll start to loosen up when you start greasing the top. But there's a lot of pumps in here. And then we'll go back and add grease to the bottom. If you can. This one's full, however. Yeah, we're snugging it up. So. Once you've greased it, if the knuckle's stiff, too stiff. She's pretty stiff. So it's pretty stiff. Just quickly go and just to take a little pressure out of the grease knuckles. It's very important with people with pneumatic grease guns. Yeah. Because they'll just sit and pump it and pump it and pump it and then you're going to wind up with this. but it absolutely has to spin for you. So it'll be a little stiffer with the grease in it. That's okay. When you put the weight of the truck onto the ball joints, it'll ride on a grease film. It'll start turning a lot easier. So this is a little stiffer than most of our videos. It's purely because of the pressure of the grease in there. We don't want to take too much of it out. We're going to leave it like that. It'll drive fine. After you pull the ball joints out, you were gonna to wanna to prep the knuckles. So some people will buff them. Uh, I suggest just using a wire wheel uh, so you don't remove any of the material in here. You wire wheel the mounting surfaces off. You wire wheel the insides off. Now underneath, the mounting lip underneath is really important to get out. Uh, then you go through it and you look for anything like this. So we've got a little bit of a gall right there. So for our next install, we're gonna to wanna to get rid of that gall so that it doesn't cock the joint sideways. I'm gonna use a small, buffing pad. I'm not going to use one that fits the whole hole because I don't want to hit and enlarge in the hole by accident. So we're just going to come in here quick and just about that much. That's all it takes. You don't need to go around because if you take out too much material then you're going to wind up with a sloppy ball joint. Okay, we're ready to install the upper ball joint. We're going to use our ball joint cap that we make specifically for this so it doesn't damage the ball joint. We've placed the ball joint in the hole with the set screw straight back. You can go anywhere you want, but I put it back so that it gets less dirt in it. It's easy access. We put the cap on. We've already seated this one, but what I do is I'll put it on and then I'll just tap this guy. Make sure it's kind of in straight. Otherwise, I'll just keep wobbling around it. Thank you. 
So using a ratchet, not an impact, we're going to start cinching it down. Now we're gonna hit in the direction of the ball joints going. We're just gonna we've tightened the ball joint or the ball joint press up. We're just gonna relieve the pressure. This helps it go in straighter. I heard it smack. I heard it smack. Right there. Okay, so we're going to install the lower ball joint with set screw facing backwards for access and so it doesn't pack up full of dirt. And we're going to use the install ring to prevent damage to the ball joint.
once we're done the install, we check to see if the joint tightened up. So that's tighter than when it came off. Sometimes we can loosen it just by tapping on it. And it did. Actually, it's a little, little snug still. But... There we go. We're back to where we were. So you just want to make sure after you've installed it that this guy moves freely. If it doesn't at that point, then you readjust uh, with the adjustment ring, and that's pretty much the only time you touch that adjustment ring. Um, but it's important that you check it before you go through with the rest of the procedures. So generally we'll install the ball joints without the boots, they don't tear the boots. So the upper is super easy, sits in place like that. The lower, you want to make sure it gets in, and it should kind of flatten out. So you may have to work it around, so it should sit like, like so. So after you get the knuckle off, you want to make sure that there's no big indent, scratching, galling, anything like that in the tapers to prevent it from actually going onto the joint. So if everything's good, after the boots are on, just want to pop the knuckle back on and then start your assembly nuts. The reason there's assembly nuts, so you can get the taper seated without the ball joint spinning. So you want to go through, eventually tighten them by hand, then you want to take them off, put your nylocks on and then torque it. But you got to make sure that these are done up because they are free and will spin the ball joints on you. Ratchet is giving me grief. So after it's snug, you want to go ahead and install your nylocks. Thank you. And you don't want to do these up with an impact because the rattling of the impact will tend to free up the taper and you'll have to start at square one again. Only this time you'll have to get the nylock off. good and tight. You don't have to torque them yet, but just make sure it's tight. So once they're snug, you want to go over and torque the lower ball joint to between 140 and 160 foot-pounds. We're going to set our gun or our wrench to 150. For the upper, we're going to torque it to 70.
And then you're going to want to go through and make sure everything turns freely. Not a whole lot of effort. It'll change slightly when you grease it, but we'll get there in a second. So once everything's assembled and torqued, you're going to want to grease this thing. So we're going to throw enough grease in the bottom ball joint that it'll basically lock up the steering. You'll usually hear a pop, the grease gun will get tight, you'll go to move it and it's very snug. Then you'll move to the upper ball joint, add enough grease to come out of the boot or until it frees up the steering, which may be 15, maybe 20 pumps. So with that, you want to go dive to the bottom, give it a little bit more grease. Now, if it locks up solid like this, you'll run and grab a pick, my fancy pick drawer. And relieve some of the pressure in the ball joint by letting out a little bit of grease. Then everything should move free. And the rest is just reassembly. Check your U-joints, check your check your brakes. Now it's the time to change parts if you need to, but that's pretty much it.